Evening, everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm David Morris. I'm uh, I've been leading for Nature Trek now for about eighteen years, I think, this year somewhere in that that region. Um, and uh, my day job, I work for the RSPB as a, as an area manager, um, and I'm also uh, president of the Alpine Garden Society. So, uh, kind of mountains, and particularly kind of mountain plants and mountain birds, is really my passion. And uh, yeah, a couple of great tours tonight that I want to talk to you about, uh, which I'll leave for Nature Trek. Uh, the first is uh, is the one in the Swiss Valleys that um, it's just south of the uh, the Wengen area that Kerry talked about earlier. Um, so it's quite nice for us to see that that mountain range that they look at down to the south, but we look up to the north of it and then looking south towards the Italian border. And um, this is kind of classic day walk uh, in that region, uh, fantastic forests, meadows, right up to some quite high altitude mountain areas. So a bit of geography for those that want it. So we fly into uh, Geneva um, again, like like the tours Kerry's talked about, these are tours that are single destination and uh, making use of the fantastic Swiss public transport system. So again, it's kind of two to three changes on the train, depending on which trains we go, but really straightforward, lots of time for uh, getting about. Again, I've not managed to lose anyone, uh, and there's usually myself and uh, my co-leader, Bob, who are there to help carry and get your luggage onto the train. Um, so yeah, we take the, the train, a scenic trip around Lake Geneva um, and up into Brig, and then change again to get the local cog railway, which is also part of the fantastic Glacier Express line that goes from Zermatt up and over uh, the pass, um, and then uh, make full use of the cable cars. And yeah, we stay up in the village of Betmeral, you can see on the map there, it's another traffic free village uh, tucked right up in the Alps um, and get the cable car uh, from the train up to the, up to the village. So, yeah, this is uh, Betton Tile Station where the train pulls in. We get off here and then take the cable car up to the village. And I'll just give you a bit of a, a kind of an overview map um, in the summer of what that uh, that area looks like. So you can just see Betmer Alp down here, sat at uh, just under uh, 2,000 metres. Um, this whole area is what we, we really explore uh, throughout the week. Uh, all on foot, um, really kind of nice day walks up to about sort of six miles, um, like Kerry does on those trips. Uh, we make as much use of the cable cars um, and public transport as possible. So generally taking the legwork out by getting the cable cars up to some of the peaks that are yeah up to around 3,000 metres um, and then descending some of the way and often getting cable cars back part way as well. So really enjoyable day walks around that area. And we also, you'll have seen uh, from the map, uh, take a, a trip further south into the valleys um, and drop down to uh, Zermatt and go up towards the Matterhorn range, which you actually get panoramic views from the hotel. So that's Betmer Alp um, in, in the foreground there, looking across the Rhone Valley, and you can see over towards the sort of Matterhorn, Weisshorn, some of the big peaks on the Italian border. Uh, our hotel is just uh, tucked in below the uh, the first white property there, and it gives those sort of grandstand views over, over the valley. Um, I think it's probably one of the best hotels that I've uh, ever uh, stayed at on Nature Trek trips. Fantastic hotel, great facilities, fantastic food, fantastic owners. And yeah, you can just kind of walk around and you can walk from there in the morning. I know often we kind of do pre-breakfast bird walks into some of the woods. There's black grouse around here, range of good woodpeckers. And really, as soon as you get off the off the cable car at the top, the birding starts. There's kind of nutcrackers around the village, some hard to see mountain species, things like citral finch, alpine chuffs, golden eagle, even kind of kicking around the sort of valley around the hotel. Um, so certainly an entertaining first breakfast in the morning with some of these kind of quite difficult to get European species and uh, sort of indulging us just outside the hotel. This is uh, the Betmer Sea just above the hotel. This is the, the sort of typical landscape that we're walking around. It's quite a nice contrast to Wengen and the Engadine in that the geology is a bit more mixed. So some of it's quite acidic rock and some of it's on limestone. So you get a different flora in the different areas, which is interesting for the sort of botanical perspective. 
some of the plants that we encounter, well, we typically work our way through the different sort of montane alpine zones, um, range of really attractive things. We've got kind of uh, the bearded bellflower, Campanula barbata, good range of orchids, particularly some of the ones that like the acidic substrates, things like black vanilla orchid here. Um, and then this particular part of Switzerland, you also get the yellow form of the alpine pass flora, this uh, subspecies apiflora, which, which grows in profusion along with things like globe flower and other species, small white orchid. And at that time of year, we also get the first few kind of martagon lilies starting to open up as well on some of the uh, heathy slopes. And then like the other two Swiss trips, we generally hunt out snow melt. So we're up on this trip in around kind of late June, early July. There's very often hollows and snow patches. And the last year that I've just done was a particularly warm, mild winter. Yet we still managed to hunt out some good snow patches. And, and it's here that we look out for things like some of the kind of early crocuses that are going over some of the, the kind of snow bells. And also things like this, this is Pulsatilla vernalis. This is uh, one of the really attractive past flowers that uh, is a kind of classic snow melt species up there. Really short, diminutive little thing. Uh, but yeah, fantastic uh, splashes of colour with the crocus and in the background, uh, a really great cafe that we often visit. And uh, yes, uh, good food, good food extends to some of our uh, stops. Uh, Bob and I are particularly good at finding cafes and uh, apple strudel uh, throughout the tour, as well as uh, really good views of marmots. Um, Marmots of both varieties, certainly plenty of marmots around, around the hotel area. Behind the hotel, there's a marmot trail, a kind of easy guided walk that people do looking for alpine marmots. Um, but I think why I like this trip to the Alps is just the range of species that we get. So I'm very interested in the kind of birds, the plants, the butterflies, the mammals, the reptiles. So we see a good range of things, things like uh, a good range of butterflies. So you've got things like um, scarce copper, alpine heath and then you've got some of the kind of higher altitude bird species so down in the woods you've got kind of black grouse which we often go out in the morning looking at them lecking and then you've got things like ptarmigan up, up high on the kind of bearer slopes one of the great features of that area is the the greater Alec glacier so this is a huge glacier uh, biggest glacier in Europe and it kind of comes down from the uh, the sort of uh, the Eiger, which is kind of just around the corner and that sort of range up uh, to the south of Wengen, carves its way through is a, is a kind of real feature that many of our walks kind of go parallel with this. And yeah, on the slopes here, it's adorned in things like uh, Rhododendron, Ferruginium and things like trailing uh, Azalea. And a different range of gentians as well in this area, particularly ones that like uh, some of the acidic rocks. So this is the shortleaf gentian, Gentiana brachyphylla. So, yeah, some, some different plants here that you probably won't find over at Wengen or the Engadine. As I say, cable cars are the choice of transport to get to the top. So this is uh, the Igisorn cable car that gets you right up onto the Igisorn cable station. We often have some uh, picnics up here with uh, this kind of panoramic 360 view. Some brilliant plants around here. You've got things like snow finches breeding in the cable station. And then the, the image to the top there with the cross, that's the top of the Betmer horn uh, just above uh, Betmer Alp village. So... Yeah, a little bit of legwork, but a lot of work from the cable cars gets you into some really great places. And yeah, the glacier in the background and there in the foreground, we've got things like glacier crowfoot uh, just, just starting to come out with the snow melt as well as kind of glacier mouse ear for the, uh, the attentive botanists that can see that one in the background. And also get up high, so kind of three, three and a half thousand metres, go particularly, I quite like some of these kind of montane alpine cushion species. So we often find at least three species of these cushion forming androsaces, members of the primula family. We have uh, androsy vandellii that likes the acidic rocks behind the uh, hotel on the Betmerhorn. We've got androsy alpina and the Swiss rock jasmine, this kind of white one, as well as kind of uh, purple mounds of... Uh, um, purple sac mountain saxifrage good birds up there as well 
Um, you often get really great views of species like alpine accenta, snowfinch. And then last year, for the first time, was the first lammergeiers that we've had on the trip. So lammergeier are starting to spread into the Alps now. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that lammergeier is going to be a kind of regular feature of this tour as well. Uh, delighted to see lammergeier last year. The hay meadows around Betmer Alp are utterly spectacular. And at the time of year we're going, um, they've not quite cut them yet, yet they're at their absolute peak. Really great plants within there, some fantastic orchids, hay meadows species. You've got things like this Eryngium, this is Queen of the Alps, a big robust thistle-like plant, and all on these tight, deep slopes with the traditional vernacular buildings. So kind of really nice cultural heritage there. And an absolutely dazzling array of butterflies and other invertebrates that we find on this trip. So, I mean, this is just a selection of some I've photographed over the last few years on the trip. A vast number of kind of fritillaries. You've got um, a whole range of kind of coppers. Um, yeah, you name it. There's, there's a, a dazzling array of butterflies for the sort of butterfly enthusiast and many kind of alpine montane species and some that are found within just that part of Switzerland as well. Um, pick a good weather day um, and we travel um, again, a couple of trains from the hotel, uh, go down towards Zermatt uh, along the Glacier Express line, fantastically scenic line, and then pick up the uh, the Gornograt barn to take the train up to the Gornograt to give really a, a kind of yeah fantastic views over the Matterhorn um, and some of the other big peaks around that area. Um, Get off the uh, barn up at the Gornagrat. Um, a few few plants that we don't normally see up at uh, Betmer Alp. So particularly the kind of limestone influence here. We get King of the Alps. We've got kind of things like Matterhorn, Pennycrest. And again, like in Wengen and the Engadine, a kind of a turf studded with gentians and primulas with that iconic Matterhorn background. And do a really nice day walk there uh, past the... Um, a blousey where hopefully we get a day like that where we get a crystal clear day not much wind and you get the iconic matterhorn reflection in the bet in the uh the blousey there so that's the uh the uh, valets trip that we do um in in sort of late june early july and then i'm moving on to the french pyrenees now so this is one of the oldest nature trek trips that um, the organization runs. This this was a trip that first started in the early 90s during uh, the kind of Gulf War turmoil when nature trek concentrated on starting to do many of its European trips. And um, David and Marion Mills kind of first wrecked and did this trip. And um, it's been a trip that I've led a number of times uh, over the last uh, 20 years. Again, for me, it's a bit like the Valais trip. It's a really great trip into the mountains to see a good range of kind of plants, butterflies, birds and herbs. Um, we tend to go here in around kind of mid early June um, and a bit bit like the, the Valais trip. It's a single uh, hotel. Uh, but this time I'm driving a minibus around and I tend to do walks with the other leader where we can kind of do circular walks or walk from A to B. Um, and they they tend to be the same, um, largely where we can kind of uh, not climbing up peaks, um, take taking advantage of any kind of infrastructure there is and about kind of six miles a day. Really nice day walks with a picnic. Um, geologically, mostly limestone in this region. So where do we go? So we we fly into Lourdes, the kind of top top map on the left, um, into the sort of uh, maritime um, mid Pyrenees, um, and then it's a kind of short drive up into the Pyrenees National Park, where we stay in Jedra, um, still stay in the same hotel that Nature had been going to since the the nineteen nineties, um, and from here it's a kind of range of very short drives, park up the van for the day and go out and do some really great walks. I've kind of highlighted some of the sort of main areas I take people to um, on the trip, places like uh, the Osu Valley, uh, go up to Port de Bouchereau, which is a, a road that the French built right up onto the Spanish border. And then the Spanish never kept their end of the deal and put the uh, the road over into Spain um, and get up towards the Brescia de Roland, which you can see from the Hotel Brescia de Roland, where we stay in Jedra, trip into the Cirque de Gavane, 
the Cirque de Storbe and Cirque de Tremuse. These cirques are big thousand metre limestone cliffs that uh, hug the French uh, Spanish border. Um, and then uh, often I'll take a trip down to uh, the Col de Tourmalet, the kind of famous uh, kind of um, uh, route, cycle route, where again, you can drive up to very high altitude and get some really good high altitude birds and plants. So stay at the Hotel Brescia Roland. Um, get, as I say, it's the hotel that Nature Tech first started to use. Really great location, really nice, comfortable hotel. Great owners that have been there all that time. Some fantastic uh, traditional sort of French cuisine, French wine. Um, and it's kind of claim to fame as well. Which this hotel hosted uh, the French botanist Ramond, um, which uh, some of the endemic plants of that area uh, were named after. And there's a kind of plaque to Ramond on the hotel um, that we point out. I always um, kind of wind the group up on the way out there about saying we need to get to the hotel for the five o'clock Lama Gaia. And very often I'm not lying. Uh, the birding starts as soon as you get out of the minibus at the hotel. And there's a cliff face just opposite the hotel, which have llama guys roost on most evenings. And, uh, yeah, you can generally see llama guy coming into roost of an evening. See llama guys pretty much daily on this trip, uh, along with a range of other raptors, including things like short-toed eagle. There's a photo I took a couple of years ago of them doing that kind of classic behaviour of taking... Uh, bits of carcasses up and bones and dropping them to break them and kind of some of the livestock or things like chamois that we see up there um, on the trip. As I say, these huge, impressive thousand metre cliffs uh, that line the French-Spanish uh, border uh, really frame the backdrop for this trip, along with a range of spectacular meadows and some fantastic woodlands and then the kind of alpine montane zone. Orchid enthusiasts are generally pretty pretty happy with a with a trip here. A good range of um, kind of European montane orchid species. You've got the kind of uh, smelly form of uh, bug orchid, Orchis coreophora, uh, the subspecies fragrans with a nice kind of scent to it. You've got things like uh, dark red hellebores, and again, you've got some of the kind of vanilla orchids that we come across in the alpine turf. Again, butterflies are plentiful. Um, often find things like this, butterflies uh, salting on dung or kind of springs that come out on roads, which often have clouds of mixed species of things like Adonis blue, some of the heath fritillaries, uh, some of the skippers, small blue. Yeah, re really great for butterflies is this trip. And also I think it's really good for herps as well. So pretty much most of the uh, most of the trips I've done Every year I've I've managed to find two or three species of snake, including every year I've always found this. This is asp viper. This is uh, one of Europe's most poisonous snakes. But there's a series of walls in places where I often find asp viper early on in the morning coming out to sun and pose themselves. As you can you can just see its head and its slightly horned nose there um, waiting for be photographed. So. I tend to kind of explore the different sort of altitudinal zones and habitats. We've got Jedra down in the bottom here. Often explore some of this kind of montane woodland. This is the Hias Valley, where we, we start to look for some of the kind of montane woodland plants. You've got uh, the white form of um, an alpine pass flower that we saw in um, up in um, uh, the valleys. And then we've got things like the, the sort of introduction to the range of endemic starts here. So there's a, a huge range of endemic plants in the Pyrenees. So we've got things like Pyrenean honeysuckle that we find within the woodlands, along with the sort of more widespread species, things like herd Paris and the delightful sort of hepatica nobilis. This is a kind of liver leaf, which is a really spectacular woodland plant that grows across across a range of Europe, but unfortunately it doesn't occur in, in the UK, but plentiful with some really fantastic leaf variations in the, uh, the Pyrenean population. Good range of bulbous plants as well for the, uh, the botanists. So we've got Lillian martagon, um, Turk's cat lily, um, and we've got the endemic Lillian pyrenaicum, another kind of Turk's cat lily, fantastic yellow one. Um, for any, any gardeners in the audience, uh, be pleased to know that I've also found these absolutely infested with lily beetle that infest my plants in the garden back here in the UK. Um, you've got kind of Pyrenean uh, bluebell squills and kind of things like St. Bruno's lily as well. So some, some really nice spring flora. 
as I say, butterflies are great. And I think one of one of the species that most clients want to see is, is often Apollo. Um, and the wooded meadows around the kind of Hearst Valley are uh, pretty much nailed on for uh, Apollo, along with clouded Apollo as well. And, and often, as I say, you can get some incredibly good encounters with that fantastic butterfly species with these sort of big papery wings. Range of other invertebrates as well. This is sulfur owlfly that looks like a butterfly, but these kind of glide around uh, kind of lacewing relatives that are quite, quite voracious predators as larvae. Now we start to come up out of the valleys onto the kind of uh, plains that are kind of grazed with the kind of summer transhumance grazing. These are the kind of shepherd huts on the plateau de Coomley that overlooks down into the valley with Jedra below. Here we start to get a range of kind of more montane species in the meadows and some of the rocky areas. So you've got things like the endemic uh, horned pansy, viola canuta, um, some of the primula starts. This is primula hirsuta, the hairy primula, which has these kind of fantastic hairy leaf, back, sticky leaf backs. And then you've got geranium cinerean. Um, this is a fantastic little geranium that grows in the alpine turf and is, has been a kind of a plant hybridizer's delight with these fantastically uh, marked flower petals. Good range of orchids up there as well. So you've got a couple of species of marsh orchids. You've got Dactylizer margillaris and maculata. And then you've got elder flowered orchid, uh, Dactylizer uh, sambacina, which comes in a kind of yellow and a purple form. And kind of at that time of year is just uh, kind of adorning some of the, the slightly moister areas of the kind of alpine turf. So okay, the moisture areas, uh, this is a, a species that I always kind of look out in the kind of cold, really oxygenated um, streams. This is Pyrenean brook newt and got kind of male and feet, much bigger female here. Um, these are kind of endemic um, uh, herp to that area um, that are often kind of people are keen to see. And then you've got some other goodies that we kind of look out for at that time of year. So and this is the English iris, iris latifolia. Um, a lot of people often ask me, is it native? Because it kind of almost looks out of place, this fantastic uh, uh, iris that uh, flowers in kind of June, along with you can see some sort of St. Bruno's lilies in the background as well on some of these slopes overlooking some of the bigger peaks. As I say, that time of year, transhumance happens. So this is the process where the village, uh, the people bring their kind of livestock up from the valley bottom, traditionally walking them very often past our hotel in an evening um, and then up to these kind of higher altitude cirques for the kind of summer grazing. These, uh, so these cirques are areas that we kind of walk into, birding and botanising along the way. And um, often have a really great range of plants in there at that time of year. So you've got kind of rush leaf daffodil. This is Narcissus asoanus. This is a, a really tiny diminutive little alpine daffodil that uh, grows there. You've got uh, creeping globularia. This is, uh, again, another Pyrenean endemic that forms mats over rocks. And at that time of year is often full out in flower. And then you often smell this plant before you see it. And this is Daphne neurum, which is uh, one of the kind of montane dwarf alpine Daphnes that grows in the turf there. Really pungent smell from these pink flowers. A couple of other Pyrenean endemics that we tend to search out on the plants as well. So you've got... Fritillaria pyrenaica, which if we're in luck, can have adorned slopes blooming at that time of year, along with uh, Saxifraga longifolia, which has these big dinner plate-like uh, rosettes. It's monocarpic, and after a few years, they all flower on mass and uh, then die and set masses of seed, but, but really attractive uh, saxifrage that we kind of look out for on some of the rocks, boulders and cliffs. Very scenic river valleys. Quite a lot of these kind of, this is the barrage to Osu, um, some really nice kind of alpine meltwater uh, lakes up there, and some really great birding to be had on here. Things like rock thrush here, uh, not, not blue rocks, this is the proper rock thrush, the kind of really rusty and blue one. Plenty of marmots. Um, and marmots are your best friend uh, going on a tour up there because when they start whistling, look overhead and it's either a llama guy or one of the, the kind of hundreds of griffin vultures that we uh, we see throughout the trip. That, and these things just come down the valley very low, giving kind of photographers really great opportunities for uh, photographing them as they pass overhead. 
couple of days, we'll do some walks into the Cirque de Gavani and we kind of walk down through the alpine turf, go looking for things like black woodpecker in the woodland here before going into the Cirque for a picnic lunch, maybe an ice cream or a cold beer on the way up before returning back down to the uh, the minibus park down in Gavani. Birding here on the way is really good. Things like rock bunting, got plenty of species that like the montane scrub, things like uh, redback shrike. And then up in the sort of more open areas, we often find uh, uh, ring oozel. And this is the alpestris race that has this kind of really white scaly looking plumage. Good range of orchids in the cirques, things like uh, burnt orchid, tway blade, and uh, some of the uh, fragrant orchids as well. And yes, we get into the um, into the Cirque de Gavani to see one of Europe's biggest waterfalls, the Grand Cascade. Makes a great lunchtime spot. There's often uh, masses of uh, things like uh, Pyrenean lily as well growing down here. Uh, but often a bit of a look around the rocks at the back and you find things like this. This is Ramon de Myconi, um, a member of the African violet family um, that occurs within that area. Carnivorous plants. There you go. You've kind of got four species of butterwort that you'll find including the endemic long leaf butterwort in a day trip there and uh more of a connoisseur's plant but many people are quite keen to see the pyrenean yam uh, trailing through the scree i think like kerry was saying going back to the same place every year is really great for me because one year is not like the next this is a cirque de tremousse one year the following year, it was like that, absolutely covered in snow, given a range of opportunities for other species, things like the soldanellas pushing through the uh, through the snow. And up in the cirque backs here, again, the birding's really good. Snowfinch, alpine accenter, alpine chuff that feed uh, feed from you, your hand at the picnic time. And if you're lucky, the elusive wall creeper on some of the limestone cliffs at the back. Gentians galore, a good range. Trumpet gentians, spring gentians, alpine gentians. Yeah, birders, botanists, butterfly enthusiasts, herpetologists really love this trip. So I'll leave you there with my final slide. It's the uh, a kind of meadow full of the endemic Ranunculus guanii and uh, big bulky Narcissus bicolor overlooking the Cirque de Gavani in the background.